Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we'll be talking about how we can run a model contest protocol server inside a Docker container and accessing the model contest protocol server from a Docker container. That's the whole idea of this particular video. We know that we can access a model contest protocol server by running them in an NPX fashion, which can be running locally or even hosted in the NPM package. The same thing goes for Python. And we can run most of the model contest protocol server even standalone. I mean, you can just say NPX, specify the MCP server name, and then it is going to run for you. So that's all going to work. But now we're going to see how we can run the same thing using Docker container. The reason why we need to run in Docker, you all know that Docker is going to encapsulate all the dependencies and even the MCP server dependencies within inside it as an container image, running a model contest protocol server as a Docker container is a powerful option. That's what we are going to be discussing in this particular video. Well, as that said, what exactly is model contest protocol server if you have never heard about it before? Well, model contest protocol server is a newly open source standard which is designed to help AI assistants work more effectively by connecting them to the systems and tools where relevant data resides. Well, model contest protocol server work as a client server architecture. And you can see that a model contest protocol server will have a client, uh, which is going to be spanning up with the prompts and requests. And these requests are going to follow the model contest protocol. Uh, and then it is going to use different servers uh, something like this, which can help you access a local file systems or even a GitHub repository, Slack, Puppeteer or Playwright, Google Drive, whatever that you wanted to. It's just like an USB of a large language model, which is going to plug in with the different tools for you and it's going to perform action on those systems that you are connecting. That is what exactly the model contest protocols is all about in a nutshell. And if you have really not heard about model contest protocol servers before or model contest protocol itself, I highly recommend you to watch this video where we have talked about it a lot. Well, as that said, let's see what is the advantage of running the model contest protocol within a Docker container. So the role of the Docker in an MCP for the deployment is that if you're going to be working with a model contest protocol server in an organization, you know that there are so many security implications are if you're going to be just using an NPM package, which is hosted in a public, you can't just use it directly within your organization. And the power of Docker container is that Docker container is going to encapsulate the MCP server with all its dependencies. For example, if you're going to be running the Playwright MCP server, then the Playwright browsers, Python, node runtime, system libraries, are all going to be encapsulated inside one single Docker container. And you can actually build all of these with no vulnerable packages while you build the Docker image in a single package. And this eliminates the work in my machine issues as well in the same time, because you know that the Docker is going to avoid all of these things. So that is the major power of using Docker while running MCP servers, especially during the production deployment. And setting up an MCP server traditionally requires installing multiple dependencies because if you're running the NPM package or Python based MCP server, then you need to have all the browsers, binaries and runtime configurations. But with Docker, you don't have to necessarily have any of these because Docker is going to reduce this with just single deployment command and it is going to run for you regardless which is the major power of running the MCP server as a Docker. And similarly, Docker containers work seamlessly across Windows, Mac, and Linux, enabling cross-platform development. And most importantly, while you run them in the GitHub or Azure DevOps as a pipeline, it is going to reduce tremendous amount of overhead because that is what exactly an organization uses as well. And that is the major power of running an MCP server inside the Docker. I was actually searching for the exact same idea in YouTube and you can see that I couldn't be able to find even a single information because there was no video talking about how you can run a MCP server inside the Docker container and accessing them from a Docker container. And that's the reason why I have just created this video and I'm sure this is going to be very, very helpful for you. Well, as that said, we'll see what is going to be the setup look like while you are going to be creating a docker container for the mcp server you need to create a docker file with all the necessary dependencies you also need to create a requirement.txt file or package.json file if running an npm based mcp server and then you need to create a docker compose file and then you need to 
run the MCP server as a Docker container. And once you have everything, you just need to set it up with your mcp.json or cloud desktop config.json file. And that's it. Once you have done, you are pretty much good to go. We are going to see all of these in action and you'll understand how amazing these are while you run MCP server from within a Docker container. So before I'm going to show you the code of how you can create a Docker Compose, Docker file and accessing the MCP server, I'm going to quickly show you what exactly is the idea of running the MCP server with a Docker container. So as you can see that I have a Docker desktop installed within my Mac operating system already and I have also created an MCP server images over here. So just not worry about how I built all of these but I'm going to show you how the container is going to be spawned the moment I'm going to run an MCP client and in here the client is nothing but my cloud desktop. So the moment I open the cloud desktop over here as you can see it is also going to spawn a Docker container as you can see over here. So this is immediate, right? And if I'm going to open this particular container, you can see that this is an MCP agent demo playwright MCP server. And you can see that it has got some logs as well, which means it has spawned some tools which has been written inside my playwright MCP server in the Python over here. And all this information that you are seeing over here for the Playwright MCP server is available within my Udemy course over here where we have built our own custom Playwright MCP server using Python and FastMCP. Uh, and this is the code which I'm talking about. Build Gen AI and multi-agent system tools for software testing. And I have also talked a lot more detail about how you can use the AI agents in your software testing and also how you can enhance your software testing completely using the agents and large language models. And that's where exactly I have extended over here to run the MCP server inside a Docker container as well. So you can see that now the MCP server is running for us over here. And I can now see that once I click this particular knob, it is going to show me there is a Playwright MCP. And if I click it, it is going to show me all the different tools this particular MCP server supports. So if I'm going to say uh, navigate to HTTP colon EA app dot swami.com and perform login operation and if i hit enter you will notice that the mcp client is going to spin up the navigate tool and you can see that this is also running behind the scene and most importantly you might be wondering where exactly is the browser being spawned up because if i'm going to run the mcp server in my local machine i always see a chrome browser being spawned up i don't see it over here the reason is because this particular MCP server is running inside the Docker container, you will not have the browser being spawned up over here because currently this is running inside this containers. See, that is the power. Basically, you don't have to have a browser or all the dependencies within your machine while you run the same thing in the CI CD pipeline, the same exact thing is going to happen as well. And you can see that now because we have not really done any of the installation, just the Docker container is up and running. You don't see the browser coming up for you as well. Now you might see that this is already working. So it is doing a navigate operation. It is doing a get text tool spawning click operations and things. And now it's asking me, I need the credentials for the username and password. And I'm going to say, uh, username is admin and password is password. And if I'm going to hit enter, you will notice that it is going to perform the login operation for me. So that is the uh, that is the power of how you can use the model contest protocol servers running inside a Docker container. And you don't necessarily have to have an NPM package or a Python installed within your machine. All are going to be set up for you inside the Docker container itself. And the good thing is if you have volume mapping enabled, you can see if there is any screenshot or reports generated from the MCP server can be mapped within your local volume as well. And then you can see how the reports are going to be. So that is the entire idea of this particular video. And I'm going to quickly show you how this can be achieved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the cloud desktop over here. I'm going to quickly run through what is this particular code going to look like. So basically, I am going to have a requirement.txt file, which is going to be uh, showing me what exactly is the 
libraries dependencies required while I'm going to build a Docker file. So this is the dependency that I have got. And I have also got the Docker file over here, which is especially going to copy this requirement.txt file. And then it is going to run the PIP install, where it's going to refer the requirement.txt file over here. That is why I have this requirement.txt file. And this is the place where you can actually see that in an organization, if you know that you're going to be using this particular package and it is vulnerable free, then you can specify those package over here in the requirement.txt file. That's what we are really using it while you build a Docker image as well. And similarly, you can see that I'm actually using an official Docker image from Microsoft for building my Playwright Python image which is can be used while I'm going to run the Playwright MCP server because it's going to have all the browsers, the dependencies which is required and it's also going to ensure that I am also vulnerable free as well while I'm going to run this in my organization. So that is where things are going to be spicy while we're going to use these particular Docker images. And once I have everything over here, I'm also going to copy the Playwright MCP file and then I'm going to use it with the fast MCP's uh, host and the port, which is going to be used within my code over here, as you can see. And I'm not really going to go through the code because that is not something the scope of this particular video. But you can see that if you really wanted to understand how these things are being built, I highly recommend you to go and watch this particular Udemy course, which has got all of these information, as I told you before. Well, as I said, I am going to show you how we can actually build this entire image and also run this particular code uh, using the um, docker compose file as you can see over here. So basically in the docker compose file I've just invoked this docker file and I have given a container name and then I'm just going to set the environment which is required for the Playwright MCP server uh, to be executed and then it can be invoked. So I have the uh, terminal over here and I'm just going to show you how I actually build the docker image for this so basically you just have to give this docker build hyphen t uh, and then you give the name of the uh, image and then you can specify the dot over here especially to tell that you are gonna uh, use the local path right the current context path and the moment i have I hit execute, you're going to see that if there is no change in the code whatsoever, it is not going to really affect and then it's going to build this um, image for me over here. And now if I'm just going to go to the Docker uh, images uh, and if I'm going to hit enter, you will notice that I have got all my images coming up over here. And one of the images that I'm referring to is this one, the Playwright MCP server, right? So this is the image which I'm talking about. And once I have this particular image, I can then start running this particular image as well. So I can just say docker compose up uh, hyphen hyphen build hyphen d. And if I do that, it's going to run this in the detached mode. So this is going to just happen. We know that. So the moment I run this, you see that it's going to run the player at MCP. It's going to have its own network and the container is up and running. And if I'm going to go to the uh, docker desktop over here, see that? This particular uh, container is running. So this is something that you can just say you are going to run this particular container all the time regardless of the MCP client going to invoke. So your client can be a cloud desktop, it can be a Visual Studio code, so GitHub Copilot or Cursor, it can be of anything. So if you want to refer this one you can just have this running and then you can have a different set up altogether to go and point to this particular server while you're going to use it. But if you want your clients to be invoking this particular MCP server anytime it needs it, then what you can do is you need to set up this particular MCP server in a configuration. So I'm going to show you the configuration of the cloud desktop over here. So if I'm going to open the cloud desktop right now, you can see that currently I don't have any of the MCP servers because I've just removed the MCP, the Playwright MCP server from here. So how do I set up this particular Playwright MCP server, which is using the Docker uh, and running it inside the Docker container. Well, the configuration is going to look something like this. So I'm going to specify the MCP server and the name of the MCP server. And the command over here is basically docker run hyphen i and then hyphen hyphen rm to remove it once the execution is done. And then I'm going to specify the size as 2G because that is important for the Playwright MCP server to execute. And then this is the name of the uh, container which is going to be running while I spawn it. That's all. 
These are the arguments that I'm going to specify over here. This is the same thing that you can actually give in the uh, command line interface or the terminal over here, and it's going to run it as well. But I'm actually going to specify that particular command inside the uh, MCP server while I'm configuring it to the cloud desktop. And now if I'm going to go and close this particular uh, cloud desktop, and if I'm going to open the cloud desktop this time, you will notice that it is going to invoke a container for me uh, over here. But because this container is already running, let me go and stop this. I don't want this guy. See, it's still not stopping. Cool. And uh, let me go and close this. See, it's it was running even before. Even if I close the or delete the container, it was just spawning up for me over there. See that now it's creating a new container for me immediately. And this is happening because I have the MCP server up and running over here. So this is the power. The moment you open any of the client, it is going to invoke the container which has got this configuration. So it's going to go and run this particular command for you. Uh, and then it is going to run this particular uh, Docker container over there. That is amazing. And now you're going to do the exact same thing as I was just showing you the demonstration. So I'm going to say navigate uh, maybe warehouse uh, NZ and see how many items are there in the site, in the home page, something like that. If I'm going to do it, it is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to invoke the uh, the Playwright MCP server over here. Uh, and you can actually see all the logs uh, behind the scene, like what's really happening. You see that now it is going to go to the website uh, and then it is going to get all the information over there. Uh, and it's running the evaluate uh, JS tool and then it is going to get you the information. These are all happening without you doing any of the installation whatsoever. All you're just doing is this particular command, which is this one. And the moment you execute this, it is going to run. But you may have a question here saying, hey, Karthik, I don't have this particular Docker image that you have got because you have built everything over here. How can I access it? Well, I have not really published this particular Docker image in a registry like Docker Hub or maybe AWS or Azure. It's all sitting within my local machine. The moment I publish this to a Docker Hub, then you can access it by just going to specify the name of the image, then it is just going to work. And the same thing is actually done by the Microsoft's Playwright MCP server as well. So if you're going to go to the uh, Playwright uh, MCP of Microsoft's probably, and if you just scroll down all the way over here, you can see that they have got an option to run this in the Docker as well. So the command is pretty much exactly the same thing that I was just showing you, but they have got a hyphen hyphen pull as always. So it's going to pull the image all the time. And this is the registry, which is the place where this particular container of the player MCP server is there. That is what they are specifying over here. And the moment they specify it, it's going to pull it from there. And then it's going to run this particular uh, image as a container. And it is going to have all the dependencies for you. And even this particular Docker implementation only supports headless Chromium at the moment, which is what I was just showing you over here as well. The same exact idea, but this is how you can run an MCP server as a Docker container and you can access it within your MCP client. Hope you like the video and hope you understand how things are working. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.